This interview will be conducted by Wesley Sisson and Diane Gross. And the recipient is Leonard Richardson. Are you ready, Richard? I am. All right. <laughs> Could you please state your name and spell it for the record? Leonard Richardson, L-E-O-N-A-R-D-R-I-C-H-A-R-D-S-O-N. What is your birth date? 10 What is your current age? Uh, 61. When and where were you born? I was born in uh, Plymouth, Massachusetts. Did you move around a lot as a kid? An awful lot. Dad was stationed at Lowry Air Force Base. Then we came to uh, Grand Rapids, Minnesota, back home here. And Dad spent many, many times. He was gone for long periods of times in the military. And uh, while he was gone, we lived here. And then when we left here, we went from here to Bangkok, Thailand, spent two years over there, two and a half years, something like that. And then from there, we came back to uh, Colorado Springs. And then from Colorado Springs, we ended up moving to Lamar, Colorado. When you were growing up, what was um, what was your what was your mother's personality? Right? Was she at home with you, or was it kind of a dual parenting thing when your dad was home? Oh, it was dual when they, when he was home, mm -hmm. and she was home a lot too, but I mean, she worked a lot too, mm -hmm. but uh, usually she was home in the evenings and when we all were there, and everything was good, very good. Did you attend church? We did, United Methodist. What high school did you graduate from? Lamar High School. Awesome. And you went right into the military right after that. I did. Okay. What kind of influenced that decision? Where were you? What, where did, what did you go do? I think uh, my father pretty much influenced me by being in the military his whole life. The traveling around that we did with him, getting to go places, see different countries, see different people, learn different things around the world and the country is uh, what really enthused me into joining so I'd be able to do more of it and uh, I grew up in that lifestyle and I really enjoyed it and I wanted to keep doing it and I thought no better way than to join the military. Yes. Was there a recruiter that came to school? Uh, Dad helped me out with that. We called one and he came uh, to the house mm -hmm. and uh, I lived in Lamar, Colorado, which is southeast corner of Colorado. Once I did sign the paperwork, it was time to go. I joined on uh, June 6, 1978. And what service branch did you pick? United States Air Force. And what made you pick them over any of the others? Flying. I like to fly. I love to be around airplanes. To this day, I still love airplanes. <laughs> Was there, like, a fascination with flying as a kid? I was around planes my whole life, watching Dad take off and on. He got to, We got to go on planes a lot when we were kids. He used to take us on and show us the planes, all the different jets and, and the planes. He was on a lot of them. And uh, when we were small kids, he used to bring us home airplane parts from the cockpit that he'd get from the base that would be thrown out. And we'd build our... My brothers and I built a fake airplane out of wood and backyard scrap wood and put these switches and things on it and make an airplane. That's Dad cool. used to bring us old flight helmets and with the hoses on them and flight suits and all kinds of stuff. So You guys would play pilot? Oh, yeah. We were always playing bomber pilots and things. <laughs> yeah, my brothers and I, we... We were pretty handy with nails and hammers and saws back then when we were little. <laughs> Tell me about boot camp then. What did you go through? What was a day like? Day started early, usually around 4 o'clock, getting up. You get out of bed. Once they beat them trash cans, you had less than five minutes to get up get dressed, be outside, line up for PT. Then uh, after PT, we'd have to run. And uh, it started off only as a mile the first couple of days, and then it 
started gradually going up from there till we are doing five miles. And uh, then after the run, we come back, have, I think it was 20 minutes to basically shower, clean up, and put on the uniform, fall into formation, and then they take us out and drill us on marching and, and learning to be together and did that for quite a bit until we got that under and then uh it just went every day progressed into something else as time went on and it was uh a complete learning experience every day every day was something new you learn how to eat really fast you learn how to go to sleep very fast and you surely learn how to take a shower quick and get dressed quick. And if you didn't know how to make a bed, they sure taught you real fast. <laughs> and how do they teach you that? They show you one time and after that, you better learn it. <laughs> you didn't pay attention. And they come by and check it, they'd bounce a quarter up. And if that quarter didn't bounce, you were doing it all over. They'd rip your bed right off the bunk throw the mattress on the floor and make you do it all over. And you better do it in less than five minutes and it better be right. <laughs> do you recall the day you left the service? I do. When was this? In July 6th, uh -huh. 1982. It was uh, what I thought was a good day. Turned out it was a mistake I should have stayed in. <laughs> Couldn't go back in. Should have stayed. Yeah, biggest mistake I ever made was getting getting out. Otherwise, I could be like Dad right now, sitting around collecting the big check. <laughs> do you remember where you were on 9-11? I do. I do very much so. I had just left the Pentagon where that plane hit the Pentagon, I had sat there all day the day before. And I drove back overnight, and I just went past my house in Wisconsin going up to Aldi's to unload a load off my semi when I heard something about it on the radio. I pulled into the truck stop, walked in the truck stop into the driver's lounge just in the nick of time to see the second plane actually hit live. I was in... Uh, Wisconsin at the time. Mm -hmm. But I'd spent the whole day before right there at the Pentagon where that plane hit. I brought a load of uh, ceiling tile from uh, USG and Cloquet. They had remodeled the Pentagon and they were just finishing up. And I took a load of this ceiling tile. It's the same stuff that's in here out there. Mm -hmm. If they'd have done that one day before, I wouldn't be here. And how did you feel when you saw that? Sick. Very sick. Felt like our country was under attack, ready to go back in the military. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've had such an amazing life and career in military service. If someone were to look at this interview in a hundred years from now and see your story, what would they, what would you want them to know about you, your service, and your life? You could take a second to think about it. I would want them to honor the country. Think about what you're doing. Uh, we're given this one life, and uh, we all make mistakes. Lord knows I made my fair share in my life. But, uh, Learn from those mistakes. Honor your country, honor your family and the people around you. And don't ever forget that. Because the people that are around you, the people that are going to help you. Don't forget the people that were in front of you that gave to this country to get all of us to where we're at now. 